In this video, I wanted to show one way to lift a wall with a forklift that doesn't involve rigging. Now, we generally only use this for small walls like this. I think it's like 15 feet long, it's nine foot tall. After you frame the wall, you've sheathed it, all that good stuff, set it on blocks so that you can sneak the forks under the header. Now, notice that as I sneak the forks under the header, I'm gonna tilt up, I'm gonna boom up at the same time as I keep tilting. And then as I go up, I don't want the cage up against the header because it could tear the header out of the wall. I, I know a guy that's done that. So basically, as I went up, I boomed in and kept tilting up. And now the wall's nice and cradle. Once it's in the air, now I can go through and I can pop the toenails out. I can cut out that door button. Something to keep in mind is just to always try to combine as many steps into the same step just to keep life simple. So I know I'm going to cut out that door buck at some point. In fact, I had already run my saw through it so it was half cut out. But it's like, why not just cut out the door buck now and now I'm done with it. Nobody's going to trip on that going in and out of the house. Second, I don't have to worry about those walls flaring because I laid my plates out exactly on the line. So as long as they're on those lines on each end, nothing's going to change. It's going to stay nice and square. Earlier, you noticed that I put the seatbelt on, but I was still wearing my nail bags. Ah, it's just a hassle, so take your nail bags off if you're getting back in the machine. Here's the same lesson. I'm getting everything prepped so that when I lift that wall, I can immediately connect it. Ladder's in place, impactor's in place. I've got the structural screw in my nail bags. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move the wall exactly where it needs to go, but everything is ready for me to just basically instantly get it all connected together. I know I can easily slide the bottom, so I tend to lean the top in when it's touching. And then with that pressure, I can always take the sledgehammer and beat the bottom over. In this case, once it rested up against that rake wall and I lowered it, it was nice and tight. Or it was close enough for me to dial in, which you'll see here momentarily. So the first thing I like to do is make sure that those outside corners are right on the line. They're nailed to the floor and connected. Then from there, I'll finish connecting the wall and pulling everything into the line. But I always start from where the walls intersect. The nailing pattern I use is three nails right next to the studs because they stack right over the joist. That leaves the bay open for the trades. But in addition to that, I also nail along the rim, so the plate down to the rim. It's still out of the way of the trades, and because we're framing two foot on center, technically we're supposed to have nails closer than two foot on center, so I accomplish that by nailing the plate down into the rim.
Did you see how well that structural screw pulled the walls together? I'm not yanking on anything. I let the tool and fastener do it. And then when I framed the wall, I made sure that the top plates and studs were flush. But then on the inside, I could see that there was a slight um, difference in thickness. So that was what that nail was for. Now I hop outside and I use my tripod ladder. I know some of you are skeptics, but tripod ladders are much more stable on the dirt. My sheeting already overhung the correct amount to connect to that other wall. So now I just stitch it up. Now I have that wall, 90 degrees to my rake wall, far better than any brace for the weekend. Okay, it's in. That was easy. By the way, that's a great way to do it if you're alone. Just tilt the fork so it cradles. Boom. Okay, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hit that like and subscribe button. If you feel like there's anything useful here, please feel free to share that with all of your friends. Have a great day.